go. Here we go. Here we go. It's a hot. It's a hot. It's a hot. White lady. <laughs> Omaha. Omaha. Check railroad. Check railroad. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Vol fans of all ages, back again with another Rocky Top Ramble. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make it last week, and we do apologize for that. Sleepy had something going on, you know, one of his excuses. Caught, he chalked us. He chalked us. But I actually think it might have been Christian. I don't know. Busy Christian week last week. They, it was they, Thanksgiving they week. We were traveling out of town. I mean, it is what it is. Things happen. But... The big thing on the block, we got to know, Sloop, how many Little Debbies did you eat over Thanksgiving break? Not many. Not going to lie. No. Two boxes. You know, not my usual three <laughs> or four. Um, I had to save some room for that pecan pie, the uh, signature Burton banana pudding, <laughs> the ham, you know, a little, little turkey, you know. And then, you know, my, my once a year serving of a half of a pumpkin pie doused in Cool Whip. Sure. So, had to save a little room for that. So, you know, kept myself to two boxes last week. Just two boxes. Rookie numbers. Christian, did you get any little babies out there in the duck blind? I had some oatmeal cream pies. Oh! That's, that is... I, I ate that for breakfast about at two thirty in the morning a couple mornings. So oh my god, oh, sleep turn your camera back on. That is on my phone. That's so about I it. Text people. No, that's not how this uh, works. This is ridiculous. I need everybody to go to the YouTube comment right now and just chastise sleep for taking his camera off. We gotta see that beautiful head of his. <clears throat> anyway, I didn't eat any little Debbie's, man, but you know what I did eat? A shit ton of dressing. Dude, that's my favorite Thanksgiving food. Out of everything, that it's number one. Mm. Say if you get like a good smoked turkey, that's number two for me. Mashed potatoes, number three. For sure. Um, but the Vols, they played Vanderbilt this weekend. Got a big W. Senior night. Uh, a lot of the seniors showed out. Had a lot of seniors get a touchdown. That's, I mean, it basically went exactly how you want to see a senior not go. Um, just sending them off the right way. Crowd seemed like they were into it, even though it was a little cold day on Rocky Top. Um, but, yeah, good day. Joe Milton with his best day in orange as his last, last career game, maybe. I don't know if he'll play the bowl game or not. We haven't seen. Um but yeah, it was a good, it was a good Saturday, boys. What y'all think? Definitely a good Saturday. You know, like you said, senior a lot of seniors got in the end zone. You got to hear some of their comments after the year. Um, you got to hear, you know, one of the big comments that I heard was Ramel Keaton. You know, we went eight and four this year, and eight and four is not acceptable here. And he said, you know, I feel like we raised the bar um, here at Tennessee, and at Tennessee, we are we want to play for championships, SEC championships, national championships, and eight and four is while you know people around the country may celebrate eight and four at Tennessee and inside the locker room, we're kind of disappointed because we felt like we were better than that. Now, as a fan, I don't know if they were better than an eight and four team. I think that's kind of where I had them at. Um, but you know, to hear that and hear the kind of what's going on inside of the locker room and hear kind of like some of their stories and different things. McCallan Castles talked a little bit about how, you know, he's been around the block a few times at different places and went to a few different, uh, been on a few different stops and to hear what he had to say about the university of Tennessee and how he's like, you know, if you're wanting to play high level division one football, he's like, there's no better place in the country than to play at Tennessee. He's like, you cannot ever tell me that any other way. And so to hear some of those things, it's just, it's upsetting to when some people's eyes kind of take a step back this year, but at the exact same time, you can still tell that the, that it seems like Hopple is still the right guy, you know, in charge. And if an eight and four is the floor for a Hopple coach team, I'm very, very pleased with that. 
So what do you think? Um, I think that Zach Eady versus Purdue, he ate us alive. <laughs> um, I think that we played better than Kansas. We got more shots off. I think 18 more shots to be specific. I think we were the better team in both of those games. We were just a little undermanned versus Purdue with Connect going out, getting hurt, and then versus Kansas, third game in three days. And then we played Vanderbilt on Saturday and destroyed them. I could give a shit less about senior night on college football. It means nothing. Wow. Means nothing. I bet it mean, not, meant something in that boys in orange. I bet it did. For one year. For one game. Hey. I don't well, know you guys just play for that one game. No, I do. We should talk about the seniors, you know. Be like, I mean, these guys... They help turn the program around, kind of what you were saying, Christian. Like, this is a – I mean, Hopple's at the forefront, but these are the actual guys, you know, you've leaned on, and a lot of them aren't big star recruits that, that's helped turn this team around. And, you know, like Ramel Keaton, I mean, we were pumped about getting him, and he's just a four-star, you know. Um, McAllen Castles, yeah, think- who transferred in. I mean, all these guys that, you know, just a little underrated, undersized, undervalued, came into Tennessee – and they probably and honestly, these guys they uh, they signed their national letter of intent whenever we were really bad. I mean, that was just that's these guys. They came in knowing what kind of situation this is, but you know, came in and wanted to play for this university. And I mean, that's that's awesome. Credit to them, and we appreciate them. Congratulations! Yeah, you think of like think of like Jalen McCullough. You know, McCullough has been there for five years, I think, now with the COVID year. And, dude, I can't remember a play in, like, the last four years, I know for sure, that he's not been on the field. I can't think of a time where he's not been on the field in the back end of the defense for at least three or four years. Yeah. And, I mean, that's crazy. I mean – you're there's so many seniors on that team and they are such a big part of turning kind of the program around from where it was. I mean, you think of a couple of years ago, um, being three and seven, some of these guys, I mean, even some of these guys, I know that like one of the Ollie lane, I think was one of them that they mentioned. He was a six year guy. Well, Ollie lane, was recruited by Butch Jones, took in by, um, or no, uh, Jacob Warren might be the person. I can't remember. Maybe both of them. Recruited by Jones. Pruitt comes in. You know, Pruitt kind of is like, I don't really want either one of these guys. And then you get you get all the way through, and then just a, like if we didn't have Ollie Lane this year, I mean, he ended up being a starter. I mean, he wasn't the best on the offensive line by any means, but he filled a huge hole. And played very valuable minutes. Started at center for some, some of the games. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of like selfless individuals in the group. They may not have been the most talented. They may not have been the most, you know, the greatest group of seniors to ever come through talent wise. Because I don't know how many of them will get looks into the NFL. But there was a lot of guys that played a lot of snaps and a lot of meaningful snaps at the university. And they really did like, they gave everything that they could for the university. And you got to be proud of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think Aaron Beasley is another one of those guys. Um, he came in and didn't really have a spot and they kind of transitioned him into linebacker. I remember there was yeah. a time whenever he, he was going to be playing safety and they had him bulk up. Um, he just came yeah, he in, came as, in as a safety. Athlete. Yeah, he's like one of those athlete recruits that we just had, you know, one of those types of people that we needed to get. And then we had a shortage in linebacker, and he stepped up. He played pretty good as a linebacker for us for three years now. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it was a good good Saturday on Rocky Top. Um, got a big win. Can't really talk too much about the game because there's not much to analyze. I mean, that the season's – the regular season's over at this point. There's not, you know, we don't know what bowl game we're going to be at yet, all that. So, um, I mean, Sleep, you kind of talked about it too. Vols, basketballs, 
they're playing some meaningful basketball early, huh? They're getting some good reps in, playing a big, big two squad, Kansas, Purdue, um, and and kind of getting tested to see how they are this year. I got a question for you to start it off, and I kind of want to talk about it um, before we dive too big into the to the basketballs, but. Um, so Kyle Ziegler sleep. You think it's just uh he had, I wouldn't say he's been underwhelming, but he hasn't like looked like himself. You think that's just getting the sea legs back to him, like just getting back in the flow of playing basketball? Because I know I know basketball seems like it like it kind of takes a minute to get adjusted. Like even you see NBA players come off of injuries, and it takes a while for them to get back to normal. Man, for an ACL injury, it's so it's so tough to come back to any sport. But at a sport where you're just constantly moving, like basketball, I mean, he looks, and me and Christian talked about this the other week, he looks like he's lost about two steps. And I think, actually, versus uh, Purdue, I actually think that he looked like he's gained a step back because he was taking a couple guys off the dribble. Um, He was defending at a better level. But, like, you talk about, you know, when you take your ACL, you can still run. I mean, you can run a straight line, but all them cuts and everything like that, I mean, he just – he's not defending at that high level that I felt like he was defending at last year. He's not a great defender, but defending at that level that he was able to, defending to his ability, he's not doing that right now. And I think that playing these uh, – playing these bum schools and then going in, you play those high-level schools like – Kansas, who's, you know, one through eight can score the basketball. Purdue, who doesn't really have one through eight that can score the basketball, but they have guys that play at a high level and are putting them in that position to win in November. Um, I I think that he looked better in those games, and I think that he's slowly coming back. But, you know, me and Christian have said it. You know, if the March Madness started tomorrow and we needed an eight-man rotation, he's not cutting that eight-man rotation for me. He's just, you know, he's – Right now, he's not defending at the level he needed to be. Offensively, he's not a liability, but he's not giving us anything that we already don't have. You know, we don't need another passer out there. We need guys that can score the basketball. So, he's going – I feel confident that Ziegler's going to come back at the level he was at because he's a competitor. He, You know, he's he's a guy that's resilient. He knows how to come back from stuff like this, and he's not going to let it hold him down. So, he's he'll come back. I'm very confident in that. Nice. What do you think about him, Christian, so far? Uh, I mean, one of the hardest things, like, coming back from an, an injury like that, and you would never believe it, definitely, like, with legs, and I kind of dealt with this, like, in high school, was getting your shot back up underneath you, too. And he's not shooting the ball well at all. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, whenever you can get all the shot reps you want, you know, in – the knee brace and all those things. And you can stir up the form up up top, but whenever you're having to, you're in a game situation, you're, you know, the shot flows throughout your legs, all of that, you know, it's a big adjustment because that for you end up having to kind of break your shot all the way back down because for whatever it was, his rehab period, he didn't have legs to shoot the basketball. And now his legs continually getting stronger and so with each of that it's throwing something off in the shot and I've noticed I I experienced that in high school I'm sure that he's probably experiencing a little bit of that now Um, but yeah he he's not he's not the he's not the same as what he used to be but I think another thing that really like that hurts him and looking the same as well is is we got a couple other guys that can do what he could do last year. Yeah, putting, and, him, in, put, putting him in a different role is very – that's a really good point. Putting him in a different role is also going to be a, a massive change for him too. Yeah, so, I mean, you like – like you got gains and some of those guys that can – I mean, last year you had Ziegler and you had Vescovy, and Ziegler could still run circles around Vescovy. Vescovy's slow. He's so slow. He's great. He's a very hard player, plays very hard, and he shot the basketball well, I believe, in that Kansas game. Shot it pretty well. Um, but he, you know, that's a – I'm not worried about them either. Like, you go and play what was the number one – well, what is now the AP poll came out, Purdue still is number one, uh, or Purdue is now number one, Kansas back down to number five. 
but say for the day you played the number one and number five teams in three days and you lost by a combined less than 10 points. And, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. I'm hoping it's just – I'm hoping it's something that works its way out uh, this year. But for whatever reason, Rick Barnes' basketball teams get through long spells of not being able to shoot the basketball and not scoring. And and on games like that, I mean, if we just consistently score and consistently shoot the ball pretty well – and I mean, basketball is a game of runs. But, you know, you consistently shoot the basketball well in a, in a game like that. I think we beat both those teams. I think they were good enough in the – what it boils down to, and this is true in basketball as well, anybody can beat anybody on any given night. And I think we've got a team that can beat anybody on any given night, and we're going to beat a lot of people this year. Well, the biggest, pro- the biggest problem with Purdue is that Edie guy, I mean, he's a literal cheat code, man, whenever it comes to hit, guard him around the basket. I mean, we didn't have anybody that could just body with him down there. I mean, we're throwing triple teams at him, and, I mean, he's still finishing around the rim at such a high rate yeah. that – I mean, and and they had that one random white guy just pop off for his you know career high that he'll ever have. Everybody always we always give up Purdue. Yeah, everybody always shoots their you know career high versus us at Tennessee. So, but um, that, I kind of wanted to talk about that too, Sleepy's. Like, um, I feel like this year we've got a lot of really talented guards and like three guys. Um, but. Do you think uh, like that depth in our like center position or five position is going to hurt us this year? Because I feel like that's the thing that stuck out most to me. Because I actually did watch both the games this year, or you know last week. Um, it just seemed like the two big guys from Kansas and Purdue were just kind of able to do what they wanted to against us. We didn't have too well, much of a bat uh, like a your response to that. But I do like Adu. I think he's you know pretty pretty good player, but I don't know other than they do, like, do we have the depth to constantly work with those guys, you know? I think that – and Christian will have to help me because I can't remember his name. But, you know, we got, we've got we got Adu, who's really good, really, you know, really think he's beefed up. You look at before and after pictures of him, you know, before this season, you know, especially the last season from this season. He's beefed up quite a bit. Then you've got Tobe Awaka, who's 19 years old. Um, I mean, he's very, very young, but he's so strong. But he's like a bull in a china shop. He can't really control that a lot of the times. So I think that, you know, both those guys are obviously going to have to be uh, pieces for us going forward to be able to protect the rim. But then the Estrella guy, I can't remember his first name, CJ maybe, um, he's really good. Like, he really impressed me versus Purdue because he was scoring versus Edie. He wasn't controlling him, but he was scoring around him. And then there's another uh what what's the other guy's name, Christian? He's a white guy. Thirteen. Number thirteen. Potentially. I need his name to be able to remember it. But he's really that we've got four guys that can say it again. Can you hear him? No, nah, he's a robot right now. Okay, so, I mean, they've got four guys that can protect the rim. But, man, you know, you're talking Tyler Edie's a you know, he's a number one draft pick, probably, or not number one. He's a lottery pick. You're talking, you know, Kansas. I'm not sure what their big man looks like outside of what I've seen the other night, but he's probably a lottery pick going to the NBA. You're talking four guys that play for Tennessee that probably aren't going go to go to the next level in the United States. Um you're talking them having to guard them. I mean, that's just so tough. And, and, you know, Edie, he is just – there's nobody There's nobody in college that can contain him. But nobody's that big and that strong that can contain him at that level. Uh, the, the most recent guy that I could think that could potentially do it would be like Taco Fall. I mean, in the NBA, physicals, height is not a massive thing in my opinion in the NBA. Guys are too quick, too athletic, and, you know, can just make too many shots. In college – Physicals are just king. I mean, if you're bigger, stronger, faster, you're going to dominate. Right. You know, so. It's, yeah. I, I I don't think that we're going to be asking those guys to protect the rim versus guys like that all year. So, I think they're going to be able to defend the defend the rim. And, that you know, offensively, I'm not worried about those guys at all. Defensively, they've just got to 
they've got to limit their fouls because we don't want to have to go four deep down there. We'd love to just be able to go Adu and uh, Awaka, but you know sometimes we do, and Estrella has to step up. And is it Cade Phillips? Is that his name? Yes, yeah, that is his name. Cade, yeah. So Cade Phillips, that's his name. So Cade Phillips, you know, that's four guys right there. They can all defend the rim, but they have to defend it at a better rate than what they were doing those past two games. And Wednesday we play UNC, and they've got a pretty good big man. So, you know, we'll just we'll see if they've learned any lessons from that. Yeah, I'm excited to watch them. They've been – I don't know. Even in these losses, I feel like this team, at least on the offensive side, has looked pretty good. Um, even though we haven't made the shots that we want to make, you know. Like, it, it seems like our offense already just – we have play, players that will – that get make their sell – I don't know. How to describe it? Seems like this year we got players who can make their own shot better than we had in past yeah. years. If that makes sense, like they can create yeah, for themselves, and yeah, like they're just a little more fun to watch. Um, but that's also coming from me who doesn't know basketball too well, and I just you know I I could see the things like effort and like you know like this highlight play connect just dunk the alley oop pass. That's what I got on right now, like. Stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm excited for this year, ball basketball. I'm really glad we got Rick Barnes and the see the job he's done year in, year out, and always make it entertaining for us. Because I remember growing up, nobody watched Tennessee basketball ever. And, I mean, you could go to a game for $10. I mean, you might still be, be able to do that because we got a big arena. But, I mean – Looks like it should be a pretty good year. I mean, what are we projected in the SEC top? top well, number three? one, not number one right now. Well, well we're, proje- we're projected to win it. We're projected to win the whole SEC. Nice. Which scares me. So. Right. Who's the other top teams in the SEC? Kentucky and Alabama, okay. and A and M. A and M's got a pretty good team too. A and M's got a good team. Nice. What about Arkansas? I think that they were. I I think I said I said did I say Alabama? Yeah. It was Arkansas, not Alabama. Arkansas. There's a lot of hop surrounding uh, Arkansas's coach, right? Is he supposed to be like a really good coach? Or I don't know who it is. You'd have to tell me who he is. I don't know. I saw like – I care. I was scrolling through Twitter the other day, and I saw like three tweets in a row just about Arkansas's got, coach, like how good of a job he's been doing there. He's, like re- he's recruited. He is. He's recruited at a high level for them to – you know, they, they had – they had two, you know, they weren't very good last year. I don't know if it's the same guy or not. Um, God, what is his name? I can't remember if it's the same guy from last year. If it's the same guy from last year, he recruits at a high level because he's got he had three guys go to the NBA last year that played this year. Mm. So I mean, you got three guys, you got three NBA guys to leave, and you're still projected to finish top two in a Power Five conference in basketball. You're still pretty dang good because they've got. I mean. Last year, I can't remember. He, he looked like Josh Dobbs. He has alopecia. I can't remember his name, but he plays for Toronto now. He's really or uh, Detroit now. He's really good. But you know, they've got he recruits at a really high level. I cannot remember his name for the life of me. He's getting some of those guys um, right underneath Penny out there in Memphis. He's getting some of those guys from Memphis yeah. to come over, and he's been able to recruit that area a little bit. Um, and then he's got some he's got some of these guys out of Southwest Community College that's in Memphis. And he's been able to get a few of those guys that are really good. And if you ever get down the road here to run state and watch, whenever Southwest comes in here and plays, they've got they usually have some dudes that can absolutely play. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, they get uh, Eric Musselman is his name. Eric Musselman. That's a good name, dude. Musselman. Better be called Weakman. Yeah. We'll be calling him Shitter. Do we beat that ass? Reverend Rick. Reverend Rick's going to take him to the to the altar. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to baptize him in that orange water. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited though. I I think they'll be pretty good. I'm glad uh, Vescovy's back. I've always liked watching him play. He's kind of like. And I know, obviously, like, I have this European, like, I know he's not from Europe, but, like, that's just kind of what I think about him. But he, like, plays kind of like a soccer style of basketball. Oh, he's, he's very so, finesse 
Yeah, he's, well, he's got to be from how slow he is. I mean, he is – Christian is right. He is ungodly slow. Yeah. I mean, he is – he is very slow, but he is very – he is very skilled, and he has to be to be, you know, the type of player he is. But so, you could be a good basketball player and not be super quick. I mean – Oh, 100%. Because, like, I mean, Luca, he's not very – you know, he's not going to blow anybody off the court, right? I mean, well, I, I mean, so he's not – Luca's not that, like, super fast. I'm not no, but he's, got a, he's got a good first step. I mean, he does have a good first step, but yeah. I don't, I don't know. I was just trying to find something to compare it to, like some guy who plays a little slower that's like, you know, just Nicole extremely Jokic. skilled. Nikola Jokic, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you're talking – Vescovy is so – he shoots the ball at such a high rate that it's, it's almost crazy. Like, I, I don't know. He just shoots the ball at such a high rate. Whenever he's hot, he's hot. Do you think he'll benefit more this year in the role that he's playing this year compared to last year? He's going to give up less shot. He's going to he's going to have to give more shots away to other guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's going to I I feel as if that hurts him, but it doesn't hurt our team because there was games last year where Christian said all we had was him and Ziegler and it was like, "All right, these neither one of these guys are on. We need somebody else to step up." So I think, you know, he's just got to hit shots he's got to hit shots early and often. To be able to to be able to help us, it can't be one of the things like, all right, we're zero for six. You know, I got to hit my next one. No, we need you to hit them early and often. So, gotcha. So I think it kind of benefits him just because he is not meant to play point guard. He's not meant to handle the ball. Um, and if he could just get out and run a little bit on these transitions and different things, and he gets some of these kickouts with for these spot up threes, I mean, he's going to be. If he can hit those, I mean, he will help us tremendously. And there might be one game he gets – he might hit six or seven threes in a game, and then the next game he might not only shoot three in the whole game because of just the way the, the flow of the game is going to go. But I think it's going to help him a lot standing into that role. It's going to help him. Like, his biggest thing is is he does not need to force anything. And he does – he needs to let the playmakers make some – you know, make some plays – and whenever he's got the opportunity to make it go, but don't force anything because a lot of times last year, I mean, and it's not his fault. I mean, he was the one of the only playmakers we had, especially whenever Ziegler went out, that could get to the goal, could score, had to do it kind of all. And whenever he would do that at some points, it was just like, oh, gosh, please don't turn it over. Please don't turn it over. Please don't turn it over. And – but I mean, I I don't know. I think it's going to help him to, getting the ball out of his hands, letting him come off screens, letting him because him off the ball. If you ever watch him off the ball, he does not stop moving. He is so, scary. yeah, he is so good at getting open off the ball, and I think that that's going to help him tremendously. And not feeling the pressure to have to take you know fifteen shots a game and you know have to score twenty for us to win. I mean, realistically, he could score five points and we could still win. While we're on the while we're on that conversation of guys that are here and have been here for a while, Josiah Jordan James, you know, credit to him. He he came back and played for us and he he's literally not even on scholarship. So, you know, he came back and basically played for NIL money, which you know, I'm saying that's a bad thing, but it's not. So he's not he's on the, scholarship? No, he's not a scholarship player. Is it because he, like, oh. So he's never been a scholarship player? No, no, he, he was, was he was for four years, but this is his fifth year with us. Gotcha. Okay. I'm and he, he like he that. committed to he he didn't commit to go to the draft. He went to work out for the draft, did that whole thing, and then came back. And we didn't have any scholarships left. We didn't think he was coming back. So he basically just told him like, "I'm gonna take a walk on spot, and I'm I'm gonna collect my nil nil money and start working on my masters." So that's another goal for for life right there. I mean, oh, hundred percent. But like, what I was saying was. He is so disappointing to me because he is so – like, he's a guy coming out of South Carolina. He's a four-star recruit. He's five-star. He's he a five, the so McDonald's All-American. Okay, so he's one of the few five-stars we've actually recruited. He comes in, and, I, I mean, the hop's there. He's so – I mean, he's big. He's long. He can defend at one – you know, he can defend one through four. He does defend one through four, but he can knock down an open three. But, man, his aggressiveness is just not there. He does not want to be aggressive whatsoever. 
I, and I, and I Are love you talking about guy. like more so on the offensive side of the ball? On the offensive side of the ball, he has no aggressive nature. I don't feel like he does. I feel like he's a guy that lets the game come to him too much. Like, yeah. like he just and, needs and then, to shoot the ball more. Like, like we need to for, we need to get a couple four shots out of him because, you know, it's like he's letting the game come to him, letting the game come to him, and then there's two minutes left in the second half, and he's only attempted four shots. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it's just a just a he, he disappoints me sometimes, but I love him to death. I think he's a great. All for life, like I feel said. like he's the ultimate Rick Barnes guy. Yeah, he's oh, definitely he a protege of what Rick's done, you know, with his offensive guys over his career so far. Yeah. He's definitely not a Kevin Durant. No, not a Kevin Durant. But he, he, I like watching him. I think I, I mean, I've already said it, but I just like watching this team. It feels like um, we're a lot deeper in the guard uh, position. Than we've been in a long time. This is this is a deep team. I mean, you're talking, you know, I said earlier they could go eight men deep, but you know, honestly, they can go ten deep all the way to March if they had to. Do you think that's something they should do throughout the year? Like kind of prioritize getting some of those other guys in the game? You know, I don't know. Whenever whenever you get I think that right now and especially before SEC play starts. It's important to get Estrella those minutes. It's important to get your guards that aren't going to play a ton towards the end of the year. I think it's important to get those guys minutes because you look at uh, guys like – what was that guy's name? Devontae, Devontae Gaines. Christian, was that his name? No, it's Gaines, but I can't remember. He transferred. The guy that's- he transferred in place for Kim English now. He missed those free throws versus – Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was – you're talking, I can't remember. It's something like that. Devontae that, Gaines, Devontae, the little stick guy. They call him Ticket is what they call him. But, like, you know, yeah. we're talking him. He was a he was a guy come in. He was a three-star. Pretty good offensively. But, like, we put him down at the end of the bench. He didn't play a ton. He played a bunch in November. Didn't play a bunch in December, January, and February. We come into March Madness, and we've got to play him because we've gotten foul trouble. And, he, I mean, he goes, like, 0 for 6 in the fr- from the free throw line in the second half, all in an eight-minute period, mm-hmm. you know. Getting him that experience, letting him run up and down, I think that right now it's important that you get that 10-man rotation going. But as you get into February-ish time in your SEC tournament play, you really need to be trimmed down to about an eight-man lineup with that nine and ten spot, maybe getting four or five minutes a game. And my that's what that's what 90% of college basketball coaches do. And But, you know, Rick Barnes, he does such a good job of – getting those eight guys ready that sometimes I think nine and ten, it's hard to get those guys ready because of the offensive style that Rick Barnes coaches with. And you got to – for one thing that we're going to have to do is figure out our best five on the floor because, to me, for some reason, the – you know, you've got Connect, you've got Triple J, you've got Adu, you've got probably Vescovy, and then – I mean, to me, it's it's Gaines. He's got to be out there. And you you mean to say Gainey? Gainey, yes, Gainey. He, he's got to be out there. Gainey's got to be out there for your five. Let those guys play. That needs to be the bulk of your minutes right there. Did you say Connect? And then, yes, that was the first guy. Okay. So you got Connect, Connect, Triple J, Gainey, um, Adu, and Vescovy as your five and let them eat up a lot of those minutes. And, you know, I think that that gives you, cause you've got, and that lineup, you've got five guys that can shoot it from the outside. You've got, you've got three guys that like, I think connect six, six. So you've got at least three guys, six, six and up. Um, and you've got a ball handler in Ganey and you've got Vescovy off the ball. I think that's your best lineup to win with. And right now it's just like we're mixing and matching so many lineups and so many different spurts and so much different time. I mean, Ganey came in the other night, and, I mean, he didn't – I don't think he scored much or – maybe not at all in the first half and had 15 in like five minutes. Well, and I think adding, it's just what – I think adding to what you're saying is right now in November – and, you know, we're dissecting this, this like it's March. They have 20 assistant coaches that can break those lineups down, get those plus minuses, get that stuff in order. 
that can tell them, here's our best five. And, you know, we're three guys that are sitting here trying to give them our best five. And they've probably had those five on the floor. And they probably do have a high plus minus. But at the same time, I think that, like, you do those different lineups and stuff like that. So you can try and figure that stuff out early on. And then you keep experimenting all, like, like I said, you keep experimenting all the way to the end of January. But I definitely agree. You've got to narrow that down before you get to SEC play right after Christmas. Yeah, you got to find out who. Uh, got to find out who the dogs are. Yeah, who the dogs are. Who the guys you went on the floor in the last four minutes of the tight game, you know? Um, and I think, you know, this is, this is Christian, I, I cannot. There's not a team in the nation that has played this four game stretch in November, period. I, I couldn't tell you the last time of all the Vols played this tough of a stretch. Yeah, we just played two ranked teams, but nobody talked about Syracuse. Syracuse is in the na- the national tournament every single year. They're a top 64 oh, yeah. team every single year. A team that recruited oh, yeah. at a high level was massive. They had a guy that was 7-6 on the floor at some points in time. I mean, they're, that team was really good. And then, you know, you talk about that tournament, and then we're going to go play UNC at UNC on Wednesday. That's a tough four-game stretch for it to be November. Yeah, that is pretty wild. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, uh, get, it's good reps, though. Yeah, I feel like that's really good reps. You you just hope uh, it doesn't turn into, like, a snowball effect where we start playing down a little bit. Because, you know, let's say let's say we lose to UNC here and then we kind of let the uh, the confidence get down on us. You hope it doesn't snow, snowball to that. But I don't think it will with this team. I think we got too many players um, this year that are – very confident in how good they are um, and are okay with taking shots and okay with getting other people the ball when they need to. So I'm excited, fellas. I think, I, I mean, I like, I mean, obviously I watch all sports, but like, you know, when you have a team like this that's really deep and uh, honestly really experienced, like you, it's hard not to be super hot for the, the season as a whole. We just, you know, it's like, like every year, though, you got to peak at the right time in basketball. That's the name of the game every single year. Um, this, those teams that are peaking right there at the start of March Madness are the ones that they're the ones that get remembered. I mean, nobody. I mean, we talk about Grant Williams and Schofield and them, but if you want to talk about a like a team to remember, you you could be a team that's not near as good as that team theoretically. But if you made a run in March, everybody would be talking about them. Like a team that make a Final Four, or, you know, something like that. Elite last eight. year's, last year's team had the last year's team had the best chance ever. The path was, I was wide, wide open. open. Oh my god, it was wide open. <laughs> it was literally they had to beat Florida Gulf Coast Atlantic. Uh, stop it, Please Junior don't College. Do don't don't walk, don't walk, <laughs> don't walk me through that path again. All you had to do was beat Michigan. That's it. You beat Michigan, you are walking into the Final Four. No. I mean, walking into it. Not, I mean, you you could do it with your eyes closed, but freaking Euros, God almighty, I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. Euros and Hunter, Hunter Dickinson, he played for Kansas the other night, and he was torching us. He's a Oh, bitch, yeah. I meant, to, bitch. I, I meant to say that. He's a bitch. I meant to say I that. that guy. How in the world do we? How in the world do we let a guy Hunter Dickinson beat us twice? He's a bitch, man. He and he. No, I, hey, Did no, actually, Sloop. Jackson, Did you see what Samuel Jackson? Sloop, about Sloop him? last year. Sloop last year. Yeah, I did. But last year wasn't at Michigan. Two years ago was Michigan because last two years ago was Michigan with um because we still had Kennedy Chandler. Last year was that team that. Out of like San Jose State, or so, I mean, just somebody crazy. Oh, yeah, that, you're right. We got beat by some freaking mid major that Florida Atlantic or about. something. Yeah, was it FAU? I think it was FAU. Yeah, they end up making the final four. All we had to do was beat them, <laughs> and we walked. Yeah, that's I'm, why I said it was like Florida Gulf Coast Atlantic Community College that oh, we got or, beat by. Seth, or Seth. Tyler, go pull up that Samuel Jackson Hunter Dickinson tweet. Pull it up and put it on the stream. Did you see see the uh did you drop it? Did you see Danny Watts? No, just go pull it up. I don't know how to do it. Speaking of Danny Watts, by the way. He said he said, damn, this Dickinson motherfucker on Kansas flops like he's on a soccer pitch, is what he said. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hate I, I cannot stand that guy, man. He is a I, I, I hate saying it, but he's a bitch. That's the only way to describe him. He flops like nobody's business. They had such a bad call, and I'm not a guy that complained about the refs in, in college because they're not good, but they had such a bad call where Triple J comes in there and he's reaching for the ball <laughs> and Dickinson's got it like this and just uh, uh, you know, gets like that, and they just oh my god, it made me so mad. I mean, he just flopped. And now, given I'm a James Harden fan, where flopping is a talent, you have to you have to know how to flop to get them calls. Now, in saying that, that guy does not do it well. He just guys call the fouls on. I don't know what it is, man. I I can't stand him. I hate Kansas too. Bill Self can suck one. <laughs> well, I mean, fellas, it's going to be a good year, regardless. We'll win a lot of games. Um. It'll be entertaining. Hopefully, we win a little SEC tournament. Maybe we make a Final Four, Elite Eight. I don't know, National Championship. Oh, Arizona, here I come. All right, so let's be honest here. Is that the – okay, we'll end, the, we'll end the, the pod off with this. Is winning a national champ in basketball this year achievable for the University of Tennessee? Man, that's such a tough question to answer for any for any team in college basketball, because I personally feel it is it is the toughest national championship to win. I personally feel that way because in baseball you've got dominant players. In football, you have dominant you have dominant guys. You have guys that are dominant and can dominate games. In college basketball, man. You're talking some of the greatest teams of all time. Fab Five, Duke from a couple years ago with Zion and R.J. Barrett and all them. It's so hard to dominate in March because it's such a grind when you play the game the way that, that's played now. So is it achievable? 100% yes. It's achievable for any top five team in any of the big five con- in any of the power five conferences it, it's achievable for any of those teams so yes it is achievable but am i like so confident i throw a hundred dollars down on it yeah i did it two weeks ago but am i so confident that i throw a thousand dollars down on it absolutely not you know i i'm not i'm not willing to sit here and be like oh yeah we're definitely going to do it i'm i'm the seat the the ceiling for us needs to be, or the floor for us needs to be Sweet 16. The goal for this team needs to be let's play in the SEC championship. And then after that, it's let's make it to the Sweet 16. Or let's, you know, after that, take it game by game. And you need to win game by game. Make it to the round of 64. Make it to the round of 32. Make it to the Sweet 16. Elite Eight, Final Four National Championship. This team has the pieces to do it just because of the, um, the seniority that we have on this team with Triple J, Vescovy, uh, Dalton Connect, who's a fifth-year guy, not for us, but a fifth-year guy for college basketball, Jordan Ganey, who's is – he, is he a sophomore or a junior, Christian? I think he's just a sophomore. I could be wrong. Did so, he you know, come from, like, but... USC State or something like that, South Carolina State? He, him, and, him and Connect are both out of the portal, and I don't know where – Connect, he was, he was with a JUCO two years ago. Oh. Colorado something was where. Oh, was. Northern Colorado. Like Colorado. Is that right? He was with something, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was with the JUCO two years ago. So, I mean, you're talking, you know, with the, with the offensive pieces we have, we can do it. Defensively, we've had the pieces around this team for eight years now that, to be able to defend at that level in March. Mm-hmm. Offensively, I just struck. I, I, we've got to figure out we can't go on these stretches of more than three minutes without baskets. You can't do it. There was a time last year where me and Christian were watching a game together. We had went 11 minutes without a freaking make. 11 minutes. <laughs> that's over That's that's over a quarter of the game where you didn't make a shot. That's and I, I'm, talking, I'm talking like we didn't even go to the free throw line. I'm talking we didn't make a single point. Now, I mean, we still ended up winning the game. It was versus Texas. So, no, we lost to Texas by that's four. How, that's, how, that's how Barnes teams get – beat man for whatever reason and i don't get it I, and, I, and i think this year it'll be better i think because i think you get in a stretch like that and you just tell everybody get out of the way and like connect or gainy have the ball and say here go get us a basket yeah 
you got and, you gotta you gotta want the last guy we had that was able to do that was Kennedy Chandler. And he's a he's an NBA level guy. Before that, yeah. who were those two guys that we had before him, Christian? Um you uh I can't think of their names right now. Keon I can see Johnson. their face, but I cannot think Keon Johnson and Springer, Dort Springer, Springer, whatever his name. Springer. Springer. Those guys did not want the basketball in their hands with two minutes on the clock. You could tell. Now, no. Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, they wanted the basketball. You got to have those guys. Ha- want and that Lamonte Turner. They wanted Turner. the dang ball oh, yeah. every time. Jordan Bone. You know, you're talking. <laughs> you got to have guys that have the attitude to want the basketball right there. And Connect and Ganey, they want the basketball right there. We got we we can't ever have five passers on the floor. We got to have a couple scores out there. I love that. No. Yeah. Well, fellas, I think uh, y'all want to. Hey, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Okay, real quick, okay. real quick. Completely unrelated to Vols. All right, Christian, you ready? Right, I'm going to expand this, and I want both of you to listen. You have 10 free throws. You have to hit one. If you hit one, you win a billion dollars. If you miss all 10, you go to prison for the rest of your life. And I'm talking like, don't drop the soap prison. Like, is there no like, you know, not to come to prison? <laughs> like, you you can't go to prison. You have ten free throws. You can take this deal, or you cannot take this deal. But you have to make one to be able to walk away. Do you take it? Yes or no? How much time do I have in between Absolutely. free throws? You as much time as you want, but you get no practice shots. It's right now. Somebody comes to your house. Absolutely, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd I, go at least at four, look, four or five okay, right okay. now. Okay. I haven't okay. shot okay. a basketball in three years, and I would, I would a hundred percent do that. Okay, Just go- all right. All Hold right. on, all right. Okay. Eight free throws. Yes. Yeah, I feel like you give me eight, I'm hitting one at least for sure. Six. Yes. Honestly, the gambling side of me would not let myself not do that. Like, I would have to. So, Five. yeah, I would do it. Yes. Yes. Four. I mean, we're talking now. This is where I'm kind of like one out of four. Yes. Am I a 25% free throw shooter? I don't know. I'm definitely at 20%. So, four, yes or no? I'm probably going no yes. on that. Okay, so cutoff is four for Tyler. Four for Christian. Three. Yes. Three was my cutoff because I'm like, I know I can step up and make one out of three. Two. Yes. Christian's all the way up. Okay, Christian, you get one shot. A billion or life in prison. Maybe it's just worth it, too. Maybe, maybe it's just worth it. <laughs> all right, now. Now we're, hey, take- we're going to back it up. We're going to back it up to three-pointers. One for ten. You give me all the way. I, you give I, me four. I'll have one. I'm gonna. I, my yeah. number. My number goes from three to four because I think that I'm a 25 percent free, 25 percent free uh, three point shooter at least. Yeah, you gotta, I think you, I'm you gotta give me four. All right. So now, the, now we're gonna bump to half court. So now I'm gonna do this in a d- completely different direction. Would either one of you take one for ten? No. Nah. No. Okay. One for twenty. No. Yeah, I'd take that. I think God it. Christian's got some stones on him. I don't know about that. There's no way. I'd I mean, hit like, one out of twenty. I mean 20, if you have to be behind the half court line for sure. And like if you actually I'd hit one out of twenty. I don't know, man. All right. So here's what I'm here's what my number, because I've I've sat there and I've tried to see like how many can I knock down out of a hundred. Now you get tired after about twenty five. I mean you get you're getting there like damn, chasing that ball down, you're shooting it, you know, a lot of a lot of little side factors in that. I have missed thirty seven in a row from the half court line to hit one. So I've tested this. So I think my number would be thirty five. You'd have to get up to thirty five and be like, all right, I'll do that. Yeah, but I'd, shoot I'd, one I'd whenever you got. 34 more shots and shooting one whenever you you're down to your last five. It's I know, be I know way what you're different. Saying. Like I, know I, what you're saying. I think you need like 50 minimum. So I I've, I've talked to somebody today that said 50 without a doubt. Now, you get 
as many shots as you want in a two day period. It, you got to hit a three quarters court shot. So as many shots as you want, do you take it? Yes or no? In I'm two days? It. I'm not taking it because I'm going to tell you right now, if you give me 10 tries, I'm not getting the ball to hit the backboard. At least I, I'm only hitting the backboard once. I'm not. I'm, What's that from the I other free throw line? Before. Yes. In two days, I can throw it overhand yes. like a football. You can throw. You can do whatever you need to do, but you yeah, got to be behind that free throw. Two days, as many shots as you want. I'm doing that. I can't. I I'm life in prison. I've never made one of those ever in my life. So we're we're talking. It's been 27 years, and I've probably attempted that <laughs> shot. I don't Look, know, I saw I saw Coach life. O'Toole shout out Coach O'Toole kick a ball from <laughs> the other baseline. And it hit the roof and go into the ba- basketball goal. I'm hitting one if I'm trying to. Okay. I don't. I. I'm not doing it, Christian. <laughs> no, I don't trust myself for that. That's a lot. We're talking life in prison. We're talking big men behind you in the shower prison. All right, and that's going to do it for the hey, Rockies. I got. Operation. Wait. <laughs> well, let's one more question. We, let's let's drop back over here. Let's go. Who's the top four in the football? Well, we got. Oh, God. I want to hear. It. Are we talking before or after this championship weekend? All right. Let's say that. Um, I have no. I have no problems with the top four that's in there right now. You okay. Here's not, all right, here's the you way. cannot keep out a undefeated Power Five conference champion. So I, yeah, I have here's the that, Washington uh, wins, they're in. If uh, FSU wins, they're in. If Georgia wins, they're in. And if Michigan wins, they're in. So, but we can all agree. Four. But we can all agree that we're Louisville fans this weekend. Yes. Yes. Because we have no, I have, n- I have no issues with not wanting to see that quarterback in the in the top four. I think I they'll probably lose. I hope so. But hell, Louisville just lost to Kentucky. Yeah, but. All right, so here's what I got. Georgia's going to beat Alabama, which is going to lock them in. Yeah. It's also going to kick Alabama out. No chance for it's Alabama. Kick, which I think, I don't know if they if they win. There's a scenario where they, they still don't get in if they win. If in Alabama wins, See, it's they, worst case scenario for SEC. So let me let me say this. This is a, this is a question for you. If Alabama wins and Texas wins, and it comes down to one of them two for the four. Who gets in? They played each other, Texas. Texas. So that's what I said. Somebody argued with me that the head to head would shouldn't matter in that point. But I, I no, the head to head would one hundred percent matter. Head to head matters. And I, I mean, don't care if it's to the here's the, to the college football playoffs. Here's the it thing. Would definitely matter. So if if here's the I thing think, that I've got go right ahead, now go ahead. is I think that starting last week, if I was making a vote you were playing in a playoff. Ohio State and Michigan was playing in a playoff game. And Ohio State should not get in. They lost. Correct. I don't care what – I do not care what the hell happens. And they're, they're, they should not they're, get they're, in. They're, 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 out. they're, they're not They're not getting Yeah, they're in. limited. They're not getting in. Yeah. Um, they didn't make you know, the conference championship. Mi- Michigan – Michigan will beat – Michigan will beat um, – Michigan will beat Iowa. Iowa will probably get a whole 25 yards in that game. It'll be a good offensive game for Hammer them. the under. And I don't know. I I, I just can't see. I think you got Michigan's a lock. Um, I think that – I would think that Georgia's going to beat Alabama, but you just never know, dude. You never know in that game. Um, Georgia's going to beat the Alabama one that's, by The 20. one that's going to – the one that's going to go really confuse me, and I don't know what they're going to do, is the Washington uh, Oregon game. If I must say this, Washington beat them earlier in the year. If if Oregon beats Washington, neither one of them should get in. I think it goes Georgia, Michigan, Florida State, and Texas. Neither one of them should get in. I mean, it's hard to talk about it right now because I mean, Florida State still got to win. Georgia still got to win. Florida State Washington still got to win. I don't care. To make sure they're in it. I don't care if Florida State's undefeated or not. They do not need to I hate I kinda, it for them. They just 
I, they don't even need to go in there because they're going to get drilled by 65 I in the first game. I kind of agree with what Christian's saying, but again, at the same time, for the, past 10, for the past 10 years, I've sat there and said, you can't leave out the undefeated. I hell, I an undefeated I Power saying, 5 conference champion. I was sitting there saying when UCF won it all and they were you know undefeated, I was like, put them in, put them in. You know? so I, Josh Hoffman. At some, point in, at some point in time, I believe that the – because when Hendon Hooker went out last year, if we would have beat South Carolina and we would have beat whoever, who Vanderbilt after that, people people would have said, "Don't don't put him in." Hendon Hooker's out. People would have said that, and they were they were already saying it. So, and I think that they would have held that against us. So I kind of agree with what Christian's saying, but at the same time, you can't leave out an undefeated team at that point because they've beaten. They they got they've won two I agree. Games they just the backup. At that point. But that. That just goes to show. I agree. This, they're just terrible. This season, in general, this season in general goes to show you why you cannot have a fourteen playoff. And I'm so glad we're going to more next year. I agree. It's the it's the portal, man. Because I mean, like you watch all these teams that are good this year. It it may be three teams are good next year. Wow. And it completely comes down to the portal because it's going to be so hard to. I mean, you look at Florida State. Florida State's undefeated right now. Last year, I don't remember their record, but they went out and got Keon, Keon Coleman and whatever the other name is. And, I mean, that those guys completely changed their whole entire dynamic. Yeah. And the portal – I mean, look at us in basketball. To go out and get Connect and, and Ganey, well, it completely changed our whole basketball team. Dude, I don't think it matters. We're all, Everybody's talking like Oregon, blah, blah, you know, all these teams. I don't think – I don't care. Georgia's going to beat them. Point blank, Georgia. Georgia or Alabama is going to beat them 100%. No, I mean, I think it's going to be a similar thing the past two years. I think Georgia is going to beat everybody by a minimum of 15 points. Now, didn't touchdowns. Georgia didn't they have trouble beating somebody last year in the playoff? They had – well, no. They, they dumped Michigan and then dumped TCU. They should have got beat. I don't know what he just said. They played – they should have beat Ohio State. They played Ohio State. Marvin Harrison Jr. got hurt, mm, and they, yeah. they would have beat Ohio State. Would be Ohio State would have beat them if he wouldn't have got hurt. Oh. and then because because TCU beat Michigan because Michigan didn't have the time. Oh, signs. TCU beat Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and bring lunchbox up. <laughs> Go ahead and bring him up. What? Michigan's a cheating bullshit freaking. <laughs> College campus, get them out of here. All oh. right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the Rocky <laughs> Top Ramble. We really appreciate you listening again. Ever. And that's going to do it. Appreciate y'all watching today's episode brought to you by Little Debbie. Ramble like hell. We did ramble like hell. We appreciate y'all. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll see you on the next one.